Now we're going to learn the structure of a position paper and how we should write it to really get the most out of our document and for it to achieve its respective goal. So a good position paper divides into three sections, each one roughly a paragraph. This is not set in stone, sometimes you can add a fourth paragraph and sometimes we need extra information, but generally this should be the structure. So the first paragraph shows your country's unique understanding of the problem at hand. The second paragraph shows your country's previous relationship to the topic, preferably with examples. And the third paragraph presents the policies and ideas you would like to see in the resolution, and sometimes the basis for your clauses, and which is also in accordance with the interests of your country. Breaking it down in a more simple manner, the first paragraph shows the problem. In the second paragraph, you introduce yourself, and in the third paragraph, you solve the problem. We're now going to explain each one of these in more detail. So first, in paragraph one, showing the problem, we want to frame the problem as our country sees it. We have to remember that our country is operating with some kind of agenda and understanding of the world. And for this reason, we need to make sure that the reader of the position paper understands where we're coming from. So we need to establish a country-specific view which would provide a brief history of the problem that we are discussing in a way that fits our interest and also is a worldview that's applicable to other countries. Many first-time delegates will write about themselves or the problem in a very specific way to them, but remember we want to get a majority with our ideas and our policies. So for this reason, the position paper and the way you frame the problem, which can sometimes be quite different from the study guide, should be an interpretation of it and a world view that is applicable to other countries as well. So what you should do in the first paragraph is define what you see as the issue your block should be focusing on. You don't have to mention your country in this section at all, by the way. Refra reframing the problem uh, can take enough time. Sometimes you'll repeat the study guides. Sometimes you're going to bring in additional information. Remember to bring supporting facts and evidence. And uh, remember that even if the topic being discussed in your framing may not be exactly what the study guide said, if you think you can get a majority and more countries will be interested in your breakdown, then that is a legitimate opening to a position paper doesn't have to be this way. Sometimes you can repeat certain points about the topic, but keep in mind that your resolution needs to be something that your country is interested in passing. It needs to fit your country's views or what you show these views to be. And for that reason, if you're representing a certain country, you need to use something which is in their interest is going to and is going to further their goals. So for that reason, your opening paragraph needs to show the problem in that light. Let's give an example. So if the topic is cyber warfare, where people use computers and technology to harm each other, and let's say we're presenting Poland, our framing could be that Poland gets a serious cyber attack once a week, and uh, maybe not as many attacks as certain other countries, but clearly enough cyber attacks, both with its you know proximity towards the eastern side of Europe and as a NATO member and EU member, definitely gets enough attacks to be noticed. And Poland would want to show the world in the opening paragraph that it's not just victims of cyber attack, but also potential victims which are still important. Because you can uh, Poland can argue that you know Eastern Ukraine we know gets significantly more attacks, but that doesn't mean that Poland is free from this kind of damage. So in the framing, the first paragraph would show how cyber attacks such as digital propaganda leaks and cutting-edge cyber espionage malware and so on are a very real threat not just for countries who are engaged in an active or less active war but also for the neighbors and this way Poland can join up the Baltic states can join there can be countries all over the world that are near countries with bigger examples of cyber warfare and that could possibly get a majority and that's why it's important that Poland needs to frame cyber warfare as a danger not just the countries being attacked regularly but also countries in the immediate proximity or sort of the, the bomb blast radius. In paragraph number two, introduce yourself. This is where you present your country's relation to the topic. This can be previous experience um, and the policies your country has used when dealing with this topic in the past. It can also be a similar, similar experience 
or the experience of a neighbor and seeing how the neighbor next door was impacted by this topic. There is no rule for exactly how this paragraph should look as long as it has facts and shows that you have a connection to the issue being discussed. Whether it's a connection of something that you want, like a new technology, we're interested in getting this technology, or it's something that you're afraid of, or something that you have an expertise in. For example, we used to have you know, a mission in that area who were doing research, so we are well versed in you know, the considerations of the climate, even though we ourselves don't live there at this point. So as another example, uh, this time for paragraph two, if the topic again is cyber warfare in our country is Poland, in this paragraph we talk about how Poland gets attacked at least once each week. We can also discuss how Poland is close to Ukraine and how we're concerned that the cyber attacks in eastern Ukraine can spill over. And Poland can also bring up the budget that it spends on cyber attacks or maybe even European Union initiatives to improve cybersecurity, showing in this case that Poland does get attacked. Poland is in the general attack range of other more serious conflicts. And the Poland spends money and uh, makes this a priority, so Poland should be an authority in this discussion. So that's paragraph number two. Moving on to paragraph number three, and this is the call to action and the policy that uh, we have in our, in our speeches, is how we're going to solve the problem. In the third paragraph, we should give an outline of the policies that our country would like to see implemented by the end of the committee session. This paragraph isn't only where we give ideas of what the practical policies are going to be. For example, we want to create a new cybersecurity force which is specifically going to track down and neutralize where the cyber attacks are coming from and make this list public, so that could be some kind of practical policy. But along with individual ideas, we want to make clear our policy margins, what our red lines are, and what our country is willing to do or not willing to do on the road to the desired outcome. So in this paragraph, our solutions should be specific and practical. Definitely avoid vague generalizations, like we want to improve education or engage in negotiation or stop cyber attacks, because these things could mean multiple uh, different policies to do that. To stop cyber attacks, we can decide to try to send some kind of you know bug which will destroy their computers on the other end, possibly. We can also say we want to stop using the internet in our country, because that also is a way to stop cyber attacks from happening. So if you're not specific, um, some kind of vague general solution can be taken in many different ways and doesn't commit to anything, which is the last thing you want to do in a position paper. You should also make sure that your policies stay within the mandate of your committee, unless you want to work with other UN bodies, in which case you provide details saying that we right now want to work with uh, other UN bodies, let's say the UNODC, the Office of Drugs and Crime, and we can say that we think that they may also be involved in cyber attacks and we want to cross-reference to see if maybe they have solutions to issues that we need to deal with or vice versa. And in this paragraph you can commit to one or two strong calls to action, say we want to see policy A or policy B, or sometimes you can give a range saying anything within this spectrum starting from for example uh, retaliation cyber attacks all the way to possibly creating a database which you'll share with many other countries. These things we're willing to do, but we're not willing to start with offensive cyber attacks against suspects. This for us is a red line. As Poland, we're not willing to do that. Um, looking now at the example with cyber warfare in Poland, Poland could advocate for a clause which requires countries of the world to condemn and possibly sanction countries that are elected to cyber crime. So we're saying if we can catch you doing cyber crime, we're willing to publicly condemn you and possibly sanction you. Poland can ask for the creation of a watch list for countries who have intervened. This could be a target against Russia or other cyber aggressors without ever mentioning their name, but it's clear who the intention is uh, directed at. And Poland can also advocate for laws which punish corporations who don't provide protections for users' data. This may not be directly related to cybercrime, but this is something which is currently being discussed in the European Union and EU policy. And this can be also used as another level to blunt manipulation 
of uh, the population and other countries through various cyber related means. So these can all be policies that will come up in the third paragraph where we're trying to think of how to solve the problem. Uh, to finish up with the understanding of the position paper structure, there's a magic position paper formula where each section has a purpose but they need to actually support the other sections for it to work. So the magic formula is that in paragraph three we solve a problem which we set up in paragraph one with the tools and the relevance set up in paragraph two. So you can see here that each paragraph is needed to come together to really justify why the policies and the ideas in this position paper are what is most relevant and most important to your country. We're now going to move on to the next section where we're going to go over the way position papers work and continue from there.